Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are talking about how to find the future value of an annuity with a formula. And this is part of our investments and loan series for senior mathematics students. In this particular video, we're going to introduce the formula and I'm going to show you how to use it in two different work examples. So here's our formula straight off the Queensland Curriculum Authority's formula sheet. Um, a equals M and then there's a whole lot of stuff going on in brackets. So let's talk about what those different variables are, especially M. We haven't seen M before. So firstly, A is the future value of our annuity, typically known as the amount at the end. M is our regular payments that are made into the annuity. I, as usual, is our interest rate as a decimal per payment period. So we need to convert an annual interest rate into a payment, a compounding rate per period. And N is the number of payments that are periodically made into the investment, same as we normally use within, it's the number of compounding periods altogether. So let's have a look at our first worked example in a moment. One thing to remember though, is that when we've done previous examples where we've worked out manually after each period of time, what the value of the annuity is, in this particular case, we don't have to reduce the number of payments by one. This formula is treating it as that. So we don't have to do that ourselves. So N is just the exact number of compounding periods for the whole life of the annuity. Let's get into that first worked example. Find the value of an annuity after 20 years, where $8,000 is deposited every quarter with a compounding rate of 2.4% per annum. Now, before I go any further, we have talked about two or three different types of annuities. One of those types of annuity is where we're putting money into an account on a regular basis with the aim of saving towards something for the future. So we're depositing money in. So look for that keyword deposit. This formula that I've just introduced to you, the future value of an annuity formula is specifically for that kind of annuity. We've got other kinds of annuities. We've got perpetuities, which we'll cover in a future video. We've also got um, annuities where we withdraw money or we take a regular amount out, such as when we live off it for our future pension. We don't use this formula for those kinds of investments. It's only ones where we're putting money in. And the way we can remember how to do that is just by looking at the formula. Let's write that formula down, which is always our first step. If you'll notice, N has a positive power. Um, it's one N and it's not a negative power, it's a positive power. So the way I remember that is positive, we're adding money into our account every deposit. Now that may not make a whole lot of sense right now, but when we look at our next video and we talk about the present value of an annuity and types of annuities where we're withdrawing money out of the annuity for our pension, it's got a negative power. So negative taking away. So we're taking money out of our account. Whereas in this case, we're putting money in, it's a positive power. So that's all you need to remember. More will become clear with each part of this video series. So do make sure you stay tuned for watching those. Okay. As always, we should state our variables. We've got a variety of variables here. We've got A, we've got M, we've got I, and we've got N. And we need to do a little bit of work to I and N to get those ready to use for the formula. So firstly, M is our regular payment. It's a payment per quarter of $8,000. So that's the value of M. I, as usual, we need to convert that firstly to a decimal by dividing by 100. So we take 2.4 divided by 100 gives us 0.024. And then we need to divide that by four because it's four quarters quarters in a year. That gives us an interest rate of 0.006. Then we have our N value, which is the number of years, 20 years, four compounding periods per year, because it's four quarters in one year, which gives us 80 as our value for N. Now that we've stated our variables, we usually actually are awarded marks for finding I and N correctly. So that's why it's always a good idea to work on that first. And pretty much every compound interest question you're going to have, you're going to have to convert I and N. So get into the habit of it. Okay, next we substitute into the formula. So we write it down with all our variables added into the formula. It's always a good idea, especially if you're not great on a calculator, to maybe do the first step. So the first step there is adding 1 plus 0, 006, and then what we do is raise that to the power of 80. And we're keeping that on the calculator. You can see I've got the 1.613758 dot dot dot. The dot 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 implies that there's a whole lot more decimal places. I'm holding that number on my calculator. I'm not zeroing it out. I'm leaving it exactly as it is. 
take away one from that and then divide that answer by 0.006 and you're going to get 102.293. Once again, those dot dot dots imply that I've left that number sitting on my calculator ready to go. I'm going to multiply that now by 8,000, which is the payment, and I get $818,344.24. And it's always a good idea to write a statement at the end as well, making sure you've used a dollar sign and rounded off to two decimal places because it's money. Now you might be thinking, that is a lot of money. Have I done it correctly? Well, think about this logically. When we're saving for our retirement using our superannuation fund, um, typically, if we were saying earning $80,000 per year, um, which is about an averageish sort of wage, it's a good wage, um, then we want our employer would be taking 10% of that particular amount of money and they'll be putting in an account. Now, this person here eight thousand dollars a quarter they're obviously on some good coin there they're obviously earning a lot more than eighty thousand a year because it's ten percent per annum is what is normally paid in and they're getting that every quarter so they've got some good wage going in here so we think about this logically 2.4 percent per annum is not a great interest rate for an investment for the future but it's probably what you would earn in the bank at the moment in 2022 although that could go up as it has been doing quite a lot and 20 years is a long time to save money as well so $818,000 is a logical amount of money to have in this kind of investment after this period of time. Also thinking about you're saving for retirement, you need probably more than a million dollars to retire on. So it's about the right amount of money. So whenever you do these kind of annuities questions, long period of time, power of compounding interest, you are expecting a big amount of money. Um, if you get something very small, you know you've probably done something wrong. Let's look at our second example. This time we're finding the payment required for the annuity to be worth a million dollars after 40 years with monthly compounding at 6% per annum. This is quite a valid question. You might be wondering how much do you have to save a month starting when you're 20 years old, working towards retiring at the age of 60. 6% 6 per annum is not bad for an investment at the moment and you're going to need at least a million dollars to retire on anyway. So this is quite a valid question that people quite often ask particularly as they get towards my age, how much do I have to retire on? So once again, let's rewrite the formula. The formula is the same one there. Yes, it might seem tedious writing the formula, but you've got to remember there's quite a few formulas on your formula sheet and selecting the right one is often worth a mark. So it's worth writing it down. Stating those variables again, this time we are trying to find A. We've got A, it's a million dollars. That's what we're trying to work towards. We haven't got M, but we've got the other variables. So we're going to once again convert that interest rate from 6% per annum to a monthly rate this time, and that's 0.005. And we're going to multiply 40 years by 12 months per year, which gives us 480 for our value for N. Let's substitute that into our formula now, and we're gonna work through that very carefully. Now you'll notice here the subject of the formula, where A was is now a million, and M is still sitting in there as a variable that we're working with. Okay, we're gonna work out what's in the brackets first and get that a bit simplified before we start chucking everything into the calculator. So I would actually do 1.005 and then raise that to the power of 480 and I'd press the equals button. Then I'd do a takeaway one, press the equals button. And then I'd divide by 0 0.005 and press the equals button. That's gonna give me $1,991.49 with lots of decimal points. And then I'm gonna divide both sides by that 1991.49. So a million divided by that gives me my value for M and then my value for M becomes 502.1364, lots of decimal places, needs to be rounded to two decimal places. Good to write a statement and make sure we give that to $502.14. So correctly rounded with that dollar sign as well. Now, you'll notice that in this formula, there's also a value for N and a value for I. We've worked out a question for a worked example, finding A and finding M. Now, because you'll notice that I is on the numerator and the denominator, you will not be asked to find the interest rate that is far more complex than general mathematics or maths applications requires. If you are in Queensland in Australia, your calculator will not find that for you, so you will not be asked to find I. In terms of finding n, um, it's a very difficult thing without using logarithms to find powers and you're not required to use logarithms in um, most of the general maths courses across Australia. So if you need to find how long it would take to get to a million dollars, if you've got your payment, you've got 
the million dollars is what you're trying to work towards and you've got an interest rate, then you're best to use the iterative function on your calculator and use your recurrence relation. So anytime you've got to find something to do with N, you're going to be looking at our previous video on the recurrence relation and how to do that on the calculator by pressing the equals button many times. Um, so this is not the formula to find I or N, it's really only the formula to find A and M. Well, I hope you found this helpful today. Coming up in our next couple of videos, we're going to look at the present value formula for annuity. That's the one you want to look at to find um, how to work out values of annuities and deposit amounts when you're withdrawing an amount from your annuity like a pension. Um, we're also going to look at um, uh, perpetuities coming up as well and also look at reducing balance loans and how we can relate that to the annuity formulas. If you found this video helpful, why not tell someone, tell us, and I think it'd be a great idea if you'd like and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so that you know when our next video on present values for an annuities is coming out because that's one you don't want to miss. Well, I'd just like to say a big shout out to our regular fans and new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining us here at the channel. And if you do have any questions, you can contact me on McClutchyMass at yahoo.com. Also on Facebook Messenger and Instagram, we are there as well. Do look for us there and see um, news and information coming out there. Well, thank you very much for watching today. I really appreciate your support. I'm Natalie McClutchy and you've been watching McClutchy Mass. Have a wonderful day.